Welcome to the training session on reviewing the surveillance definition change for up-to-date vaccination status. My name is Elizabeth Kalile, and I work with the Division of Healthcare Quality Promotion at CDC. I will be presenting information today along with my colleagues, Molly Stylins and Hannah Reeses. Before we begin, and as a general reminder, please contact CMS with questions about reporting requirements using the email addresses provided on the slide. The objectives for today's webinar are to review the up-to-date definition change as this new definition applies to weeks beginning on June the 27th, 2022. We will then review example scenarios and discuss frequently asked questions. Throughout the presentation, we will be reviewing this definition as it applies to the COVID-19 vaccination modules and the resident impact and facility capacity pathway in NHSN. Please note that the slides from today's session will be posted to the NHSN website in the coming weeks. Now let's begin reviewing the new up-to-date definition for COVID-19 vaccination. The image on this slide shows the question on up-to-date COVID-19 vaccination status for the COVID-19 vaccination modules. Facilities will report on the cumulative number of individuals who are up-to-date with COVID-19 vaccines for question number five. Now, Molly will review the next slide on the RIFC pathway. Hey everyone, my name is Molly Stillians um, and I will go over how um, up, the up-to-date definition kind of applies to the resident impact and facility capacity pathway. Just as a reminder, um, resident impact and facility capacity is one of our pathways. We refer to it as RIFC. Um, it's one of the COVID-19 surveillance pathways, and this can be found under pathway data reporting. So when you log into NHSN and click on COVID-19 from that left side menu, and you see the pop-out menu, you would go to pathway data reporting to access the pathways. So this is a little bit different from um, the vaccination modules. This is our COVID-19 pathways that you would get to from clicking on pathway data reporting. Um, so as you can see in the screenshot above, this is our up-to-date data element down here at the bottom of the screen. This is within the RIFC pathway. Um, and this data element includes residents who meet the CDC recommendations for up-to-date with COVID-19 vaccines, and the most recent dose was received 14 days or more before the specimen collection of the newly positive SARS-CoV-2 viral test result. So that's kind of how it applies within the pathway. Please note that this definition may change over time for NHSN surveillance. Therefore, facilities should refer to the definition on the first day of the reporting quarter. Facilities should use the definitions outlined in the document linked on this slide for each quarter. Facilities should review the document at least once per quarter to check for any definition updates. Reporting periods for up-to-date COVID-19 vaccination data include quarter two and three of 2022. In April of 2022, CDC first defined up-to-date vaccination. Therefore, the April definition is used to report data for quarter two of 2022. Then in June of 2022, CDC modified the definition of up-to-date vaccination. Because of this, facilities should use the definition modified in June to report data for quarter three of 2022. Please note that facilities should use the definition for the quarter they are reporting for, regardless of when they report those data. So for instance, if a facility was reporting data for quarter four of 2021, during quarter three of 2022, they would use the up-to-date vaccination definition from quarter four of 2021 for data reporting. Now let's review some key terms surrounding COVID-19 vaccination. This slide reviews primary COVID-19 vaccination series. So completing the series means receiving a two-dose series of an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, which is Pfizer and Moderna, 
or a single dose of Janssen COVID-19 vaccine. We will now discuss the difference between a booster dose and an additional dose. A booster dose is another dose of vaccine administered after receiving a primary vaccine series to enhance or restore protection, which might have subsided over time. An additional dose is another dose of vaccine administered to people who are less likely to mount a protective immune response after initial vaccination. People who are moderately or severely immune compromised should receive an additional dose. Now we'll go over an important point about data reporting. If an individual was administered one or two doses of COVID-19 vaccine after they completed their primary series, with no further details provided, then for the purpose of NHSN surveillance, assume that these doses are boosters and not additional doses, unless you have specific documentation indicating that they are additional doses administered due to the individual having a moderately or severely immunocompromising condition. So this slide shows the new definition of up-to-date COVID-19 vaccination that should be applied for the weeks beginning Monday, June 27th. The items highlighted in yellow are modifications compared to the original up-to-date definition. Please note that the definition is unchanged for individuals under 50 years of age. However, for individuals over 50 years old, they are considered up-to-date if they received a second booster dose or received the first booster dose less than four months ago and not yet eligible for the second booster dose. Please note that the original definition only required one booster dose. So now I'll turn things over to my colleague, Hannah Reeses, who will go over examples of how to report up-to-date vaccination status. Thanks, Elizabeth. And I just wanted to spend one more minute on this slide since it's this is pretty much the whole purpose of this training today is um, you know, reviewing the new up-to-date definition. So um, like Elizabeth said, if you're under 50 years old, the definition for up-to-date has not changed. Individuals under 50 are considered up-to-date if they've received at least one booster dose or if they recently received their complete primary series. And this means that these individuals with recent primary series completed their two-dose primary series of Pfizer or Moderna less than five months ago, or they received a single dose of Janssen less than two months ago. Uh, but as Elizabeth said, for individuals 50 and older, um, this, this part of the up-to-date definition has changed. So now individuals 50 and older either need to have received a second booster dose or they received their first booster dose less than four months ago, and therefore they're not yet eligible for a second booster dose. Or this part also hasn't changed. They could have received recent primary series, uh, but so therefore they're not yet eligible for a booster dose, such as recent Pfizer or Moderna completion of the primary series in the last five months, or a single dose of Janssen less than two months ago. And then at the bottom of the table, there's a few nuances related to individuals who have a moderately to severely immunocompromising condition. Um, similarly, the parts of this definition for up-to-date have changed and parts have not. So the parts that have not changed are that um, individuals with a moderately to severely immunocompromising condition are considered up-to-date if they received an additional dose less than three months ago, if the primary series was Moderna or Pfizer, or if they received an additional dose less than two months ago, if the primary series was the Janssen vaccine, or if they received an additional dose and one booster dose less than four months ago, or if they've received a second booster dose. So one takeaway from this slide is that anyone who's received two booster doses, you know that they are up to date. If under 50, one booster dose. Otherwise, you have to look at how recently they received other uh, earlier doses. And I, I suggest taking a screenshot of this slide. I'm going to refer back to it a lot. I, um, since this definition has changed, I'm constantly looking at this table to remind myself of all of the various ways that individuals can be up to date. Um, and this 
table will also be posted in our NHSN up to date document that that's posted on our on our website. And I strongly recommend referring back to it frequently. Um, so if possible, I suggest taking a screenshot of this right now. And we'll also we'll send a follow up email to this webinar and we'll include the table there as well. But I think it would be useful for you as we go through the webinar to have this on hand. So now I'll go through some examples. Um, so this is a screenshot of the long term care resident form and um, how the question looks and how it would be reported. So in this example, there are 40 residents staying in the facility. 30 of the residents have complete primary series. Um, of these 30 for question four, um, 25 of them have received any additional or booster doses. And then 26 total are considered up to date. And that's how many are reported under question five. So this up to date is a mixture like most likely of people who have received booster doses um, and people who have received recent primary series. So the first example, Bill is 65 years old. He received two doses of Moderna for his primary series, and he later received two, two booster doses of Moderna. His second booster dose was five months ago. Is Bill considered up to date? And the answer is yes, Bill is considered up to date with COVID-19 vaccines because he received two booster doses. So pulling up the table here, anyone who received, uh, and he's, I think, 65 years old, so he would be on the right side of the table. He received his second booster dose, so therefore he is up to date. Thanks, Hannah. So this is the same example, but we're, we're just going to go over, go over how it applies to the RIFC pathway. Um, so the scenario, like I said, is similar to the one that we just discussed on the previous slide. So Bill tested positive. Um, Bill is a resident of our fictitious nursing home here, DHQP nursing home. He's 65 years old and he tested positive on June 23rd, 2022. Um, let's see, he received a second booster dose five months ago. Since he is over 50 years old and had received two booster doses, he is considered up to date per CDC recommendations. Since the up-to-date count is part of surveillance data, in order to be included in this count, the most recent dose of COVID-19 vaccine would need to be received 14 days or more before the specimen collection of the newly positive SARS-CoV-2 viral test result. So in this example, 14 days or more have passed, therefore Bill should be included in the up-to-date count for the RIFC pathway. Thank you, Molly. And I also just wanted to mention that all of these examples that we're going over are examples of how to apply the new updated up-to-date definition. So this is how all of these examples will be applied beginning with the week, beginning next week, 627, as this is the first week of surveillance reporting quarter three. So here's another example. Anne is 20 years old. She received two doses of the Moderna vaccine. Her last dose was seven months ago. She's not, she has not received any booster doses. So is Anne considered up to date? And the answer is no, Anne is not considered up to date because she has not received a booster dose even though she, was, she is eligible for it. And the reason that she's eligible is because her second dose of her Moderna primary series was seven months ago. At, once it became five months after her second dose of Moderna, she became eligible for a booster. So right at that five month mark, she is no longer up to date unless she receives a booster. Um, and because Anne is under 50 years old, she only needs to receive one booster dose in order to be considered up to date. In this example, Mary is 35 years old. She received two primary series doses of Moderna and she received one booster dose two months ago. Is Mary up to date? Yes, she is up to date because she is under 50 years old and she received one booster dose. Mary would be included in question 2.2, complete primary series, question four, any additional or booster doses, question 4.1, if this is someone completing the resident vaccination form, uh, number of residents who have received only one booster dose, and question five, number of individuals who are up to date. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so again, we'll go over this scenario 
as it pertains to the RIFC pathway. Um, so it's the same, same example here. Mary is 35 years old and she's a resident again of our fictitious nursing home, DHQP nursing home. She tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 on 62222. Um, Mary received two primary series doses of Moderna um, and Mary also received one booster dose of Moderna um, COVID-19 vaccine two months ago. So is Mary considered up to date? Um, so yes, she is considered up to date because she is less than 50 years old and received a booster dose. So Mary would be included in the following counts. The positive test, complete primary vaccination series, additional or booster vaccination, the one booster count, which is a subcategory of the additional or booster vaccination data element. Um, so she would be considered there since she's had a booster dose and she would be in the one booster data element since she's had one booster. And she would also be counted in the up-to-date data element for the resident impact and facility capacity pathway. Yes, sorry about that. Oh, I forgot I had two slides back to back. <laughs> um, so here's just another example of um, another resident that we have for RAFC. So Tom is 60 years old and he has also had a positive test. He tested positive on 6-21-22. Um, he has received two doses of Pfizer for his primary series. And then Tom also received one booster dose of Moderna COVID-19 vaccine four and a half months ago. So first, is Tom considered up to date? Um, no. So Tom is not up to date with COVID-19 vaccines because he is 60 years old. So he is, you know, older than 50 and received only one booster dose. That was, and that was four and a half months ago. So since it has been more than four months since his booster dose, Tom is eligible for a second booster, but he has not yet received it. So he is not considered up to date per those CDC recommendations. So as far as the RAFC pathway and where he would fall um, into those counts when you're in that pathway. So he did have a positive test. So he's included in the positive test count. He completed his primary vaccination series. Um, he had two doses of Pfizer. So he's counted in the complete primary vaccination series. Um, he did receive one booster dose. So he's counted in the additional or booster vaccination data element section. And then within those subcategories that come after additional or booster dose vaccination, he would be counted in the one booster count. Um, and then that is it. He's not considered up to date, so you wouldn't count him in the up to date data element. Now, switching gears back to the vaccination form, here's another example. Jackie is 78 years old. She's received two doses of the Moderna vaccine, and then she received two booster doses of Moderna vaccine. Is Jackie considered up to date? And yes, she is considered up to date because she received two booster doses. So Jackie would be counted in the question 2.2, complete primary series, any additional or booster doses. Uh, on the resident form, she would be counted under question 4.2, having received two or more booster doses, and question five, up to date. John is 23 years old. John received two doses of Moderna, and his last dose of Moderna was seven months ago. Is John up to date? No, John is not up to date because he has not received a booster dose, even though he's eligible for it. It's been over five months since he received his second dose of Moderna. Therefore, John is now eligible for a booster dose, but has not yet received it. So he is not up to date. John would be included under question 2.2, any complete primary series. Uh, and another example, Frank is 70 years old. Frank has received two doses of Pfizer and the last dose was three, month, three months ago. Is Frank considered up to date? Yes, Frank is up to date with COVID-19 vaccines because it has been three months since he received his second dose of Pfizer, and therefore Frank is not yet eligible for a booster dose at this time. But Frank will become eligible once it has been five months since his last dose. So once we hit the five month mark since the last dose in his primary series, he will need to receive a booster or else he will not be up to date any longer. So Frank would be included in question 2.2, any complete primary series and question five up to date. But remember, you have to keep track of how long it's been since these vaccinations in order to determine when an individual becomes no longer up to date because they're now eligible for an um, another booster dose. Jane is 19. She only received the first dose of Pfizer 
is Jane up to date? And no, she's not up to date with COVID-19 vaccines because she did not receive all recommended doses in the primary vaccine series. She would only be counted in question 2.1, only one dose of a two-dose primary vaccine series. And one more example for now, Alice has received two doses of Moderna. She received an additional dose one month ago due to having a moderately to severely immunocompromising condition. And she did not receive any booster doses. So is Alice considered up to date? Yes, Alice is currently considered up to date with COVID-19 vaccines because she received an additional dose one month ago, meaning less than three months ago, which is the time frame for additional doses and up-to-date status when the primary series was Pfizer or Moderna. Therefore, Alice is not yet eligible for a booster dose at this time, but she will become eligible once it has been three months since her additional dose. And I'm just going to pull up the table since it gets a little complicated when we're talking about individuals with a moderately to severely immunocompromising condition. So in this case, um, Alice had, um, she falls into this first scenario here, number one, she received an additional dose less than three months ago if primary series was Moderna or Pfizer. So we know her primary series was, was Moderna and her additional dose was one month ago. Therefore, she is up to date and falls into this category here. Uh, but once it's been three months, she'll need to receive a booster. And Alice would be counted in question 2.2, complete primary series, question four, any additional or booster doses, and question five, up to date. And now we are going to go over some frequently asked questions. And Elizabeth, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Hannah. So the first question asks, how do I categorize a resident who received a complete primary COVID-19 vaccine series of Moderna with the most recent dose received four months ago? Yeah, so this person would be included in complete primary series and uh, up to date because this person had their completion of the primary series less than five months ago. So I'll pull up the table. And um, it doesn't really matter in this case how old the individual is because for both individuals under 50 and over 50, if you completed your primary series of Pfizer or Moderna less than five months ago, then you are currently up to date. But it will become important once, they're, um, once they've received boosters um, and once it's been more than five months since the primary series because depending on their age, that determines how many boosters they will eventually need to receive in order to be up to date. So for question number two, an individual received a complete primary COVID-19 vaccine series five months ago, but did not receive any booster doses. So how would this individual be categorized? So this person would only be counted under complete primary series this person is not considered up to date because they completed their primary series exactly five months ago. So they are now eligible for a booster dose. So looking at the table again, um, those uh, in order to be considered up to date, you would have to have completed your two dose primary series less than five months ago. So exactly at the five month mark, they're no longer up to date. They need to receive a booster dose in order to maintain their up to date status. So question three asks, how do I categorize a resident who is 75 years old and received a complete primary COVID-19 vaccine series and one booster dose six months ago? Yeah, so because this person is 75, which is older than 50 years old, and they've only received one booster dose, and this booster dose was six months ago, uh, they would not be considered up to date because um, if you're over 50 and you've only received one booster dose, that booster dose must have been received less than four months ago in order to be considered up to date. So this person would be counted in complete primary series, any additional or booster doses. And if they're a resident, they would be counted in question 4.1, only one booster dose of COVID-19 vaccine. 
Uh, because again, they're 75, which is over 50, they've received only one booster dose, and that booster dose was over four months ago. So this individual would need to receive a second booster dose uh, to be considered up to date based on the new definition, which we begin to apply next Monday, June 27th. So question four presents a scenario where a resident received a completed primary COVID-19 vaccine series and two booster doses, most recently in April of 2022. This person is considered up to date because they have received two booster doses. And um, when, when individuals have received two booster doses, that's basically all the information that you need to know. If you know that they're both booster doses, it doesn't matter how old they are or even when the second booster dose was received. Two booster doses, you automatically know they're up to date. So this individual would be counted in complete primary series, any additional or booster doses. If they're a nursing home resident, they would be included in individuals who received two or more booster doses and up to date. Molly, we'll turn it over to you for this one. Thanks, Anna. So we're going to take the same question on the previous slide and just apply it to the RIFC pathway. And just as a reminder, again, the RIFC pathway can be found by going to pathway data reporting. Um, once you click on COVID-19, then you would select pathway data reporting, and that's where you get to the COVID-19 pathways and the RIFC pathway, pathway will be there. Um, so if we're applying the previous slides information, um, the resident would be included in the positive test count. Um, so this resident, obviously they received both um, series of the, uh, both doses of the primary series. Then they also received two booster doses and um, they tested positive. So that is, you know, why they're being included in the RIFC pathway. They, they are a resident who has had a positive test. Um, so we would include them obviously in the positive test count. And then because they have had their um, primary series, they've had two, two, you know, let's just say they had Pfizer. They had both doses of Pfizer for their primary series. They're, con they're counted in the complete primary vaccination series data element. And then we know that they have received two booster doses. So they will be included in the additional or booster dose vaccination data element. And then within the subcategories that go along with that, they would be included in two or more booster doses. Um, they would be included in that count. And also they would be included in the up-to-date count since they have had two booster doses, you know that they are up-to-date. Thanks, Molly. And also that, um... Uh, the the second booster dose was over 14 days ago, right? So we know that they're included in the um, that up to date category and the two or more boosters since they the um, they need to you need to take into account that 14 day lag for the RAFC form. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Um, so on all the, you know the 14 day rules kind of been in place for our RAFC pathway for quite some time, and that does apply to the up to date data element. So if they are, you know, up to date per CDC recommendations. So for this example, this person has had two booster doses. So, you know, by the CDC definition, they are up to date. So if they're considered up to date and they've had a positive test, then what you'll need to do is to try to see if they are considered, you know, if they need to be counted in the up to date data element of the RIFC pathway is have um, 14 days or more, you know, passed since they've had that vaccine and when their test became positive. So there was a 14 day window um, and that applies to, you know, almost all the other data elements within the RIFC pathway. So it also applies to up to date. Um, and so that's a little bit, that's kind of where the difference comes in as far as the CDC definition and our surveillance definition is that we do want there to be a 14 day lag and um, that, you know, surveillance definitions are just a little bit different. We're looking at some vaccine effectiveness. So that's kind of where the difference comes in. So if they're, we still want you to, you know, look at the CDC recommendations to know, are they up to date? Are they considered up to date? And then if they are, you know, has it been 14 days since they've received that vaccine and when their test was positive to just be included for the surveillance purposes of the RIFC pathway? Yeah. So from whenever they test positive, what was their stat, their vaccination status 14 days ago, basically, is what is what matters for the RIFC pathway. Right. Back to the vaccination forms. Yes, thank you, Molly and Hannah. So question five 
asks about how to categorize someone who received a completed primary COVID-19 vaccine series of Moderna and one additional dose one month ago due to having a moderately to severely immune compromising condition, but no booster doses. Yeah, so this person would be counted under complete primary series, any additional or booster dose, and up to date. And the reason that they're up to date is because their additional dose was received one month ago. Um, so once it's been three months since they've received their additional dose, they would no longer be up to date because they would then be eligible for a booster dose. So in this instance, an individual received a completed primary COVID-19 vaccine series and one additional dose due to having a moderately to severely immune compromising condition plus a booster dose. Right, so because this person has a moderately to severely immunocompromising condition and they've received um, one additional dose and one booster dose three months ago, they are considered up to date. Um, I'll pull the table back up again. So they fall into category three here at the bottom of the table. They received an additional dose and one booster dose less than four months ago. So this person would be counted in complete primary series, any additional or booster doses. If a nursing home resident, they would be counted in question 4.1, only one booster dose and up to date. At the four month mark, at, once it's been four months since their one booster dose, they would need to receive a second booster dose in order to maintain their up-to-date status. So next, I'm just going to talk for a minute about how the new up-to-date definition impacts the person level or event level vaccination tool. Um, and just a note right off the bat, the person level event level vaccination form or vaccination tool is currently only available in the long-term care module for residents and healthcare personnel. Um, but we do plan to expand this to other components like HPS in the future. Um, so stay tuned for that. We're working hard on making that happen. Um, but for now, this is only applicable to long-term care facilities. Um, so the person-level COVID-19 vaccination forms are optional tools that can be used to report data to the long-term care, weekly healthcare personnel, and resident vaccination forms. Uh, these are available in the NHSN application, and SAMS Level 3 access is required in order to use them. And to request SAMS Level 3 access, please contact NHSN at cdc.gov and place in the subject line SAMS Level 3 access. And these sheets are, this tool is essentially the new and improved version of the Excel data tracking worksheets, which have now been retired for long-term care since we have the um, event level vaccination tool up and running. Um, so why is this important? Data on the individual, on individual residents and healthcare personnel are entered line by line in the optional person level vaccination tool. And the NHSN application takes that person level information and calculates and enters the weekly totals for you and calculates and determines who is up to date based on the vaccination dates. And this is the major benefit of using this tool and can sim significantly simplify the reporting because all of the calculations and the very complicated uh, definition for up to date that all gets applied for you. And the logic for the new up to date definition has been added to the event level vaccination tool and it will be automatically applied for all weeks beginning next week, June 27th. Um, and an important note about this is that this, this does require that individuals enter date of birth for all individuals in the facility as of June 27th. So everyone who's currently listed, you will have to enter date of birth beginning next week. And this is because age, as you know, is part of the new up-to-date definition. So we need to have the date of birth in order to calculate whether someone is or is not up-to-date. Um, and just a reminder, you must select the View Reporting Summary and Submit button and select the reporting week you want to submit data for, review the totals, and click Save and Submit in order to successfully submit data to the weekly vaccination forms. 
Um, and as I mentioned, we are expanding to other modules. No, we can still see it. You can see it? Okay, I can't see it. That's fine. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, okay. And here are some resources for the person level or event level vaccination forms. They can all be found on the long-term care website. Um, as a reminder, we have a quick reference guide. We have um, a few trainings posted, including the event level vaccination forms, office hours and FAQs. Um, and the YouTube link for this training, the recording is now posted. Um, and we have a lot of CSV materials if you're interested in using um, a CSV template to upload your data. Um, and we will be posting new June 2022 person level CSV files next week to the website that include date of birth. So keep an eye out for that. And a reminder of our other resources, um, they can all be found on the NHSN vaccination websites, uh, the weekly healthcare personnel and resident COVID-19 vaccination website for long-term care facilities, um, the weekly healthcare personnel HPS website, and dialysis. Uh, you can find training slides, quick reference guides, frequently asked questions, our data collection forms, CSV files, the event level and person level files. Um, and lastly, this understanding key terms and up-to-date definition document. This is the really important document where we will post all updates to the up-to-date definition. And this is the website that you should, or the, the form that you should reference in order to determine which up-to-date definition is being applied for which periods of time. Um, for, for surveillance purposes, I, I know this is something that has come up a lot frequently. Um, there will be times where the, C, the CDC definition or the interim clinical considerations definition might change, but the NHSN surveillance definition will not change until the beginning of the next reporting quarter. And that is because we need a stable definition for surveillance tracking and also for the various quality reporting programs that uh, facilities uh, participate in. Um, those data are aggregated at the quarter level, so for every three months. So we need to make sure that we're using a stable definition for at least three month periods. So that's why a few weeks ago, um, when CDC, CDC updated the up to date definition, we in NHSN are not applying that up-to-date definition until the beginning of the next quarter, which happens to begin on June 27th, for, um, and that's the beginning of reporting quarter three for 2022. Um, so uh, the, again, this document is very important, and the updated version of this document will be posted on our website by next week. And that document essentially will contain all of the information that we covered in this training today. And these slides will also be posted, hopefully within the next week or so to the website. Um, and as always, you can email user support at nhsn at cdc.gov and please include weekly COVID-19 vaccination in the subject line of the email along with your facility type. And that will help um, get the question routed to our group, our team more quickly.